Good evening, everyone. We'd like to welcome you tonight to our uh, Tuesday night Bible study. This is Newness of Life World Outreach Center. Uh, glad you um, joined us tonight uh, just for a time in the Word tonight. So we invite you to get your Bibles, get your electronic devices, your phones, um, follow with us in the scripture um, as we dive into the Word of God tonight. Uh, we believe that by the leading of the Holy Spirit that this is going to be good, that it will benefit your life. And so we just thank Thank you for joining us, and we're going to go ahead and get um, into the Word of God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight for this opportunity that you've given us, Father to come before your presence in your word, Father. We thank you, Holy Spirit, uh, being our teacher, that you're teaching us, you're showing us things to come. You bring all things to our remembrance, and you guide us into all truth. And so tonight, our hearts are open to hear from you. We thank you for your direction and your insight, your wisdom, and everything that we need tonight. We thank you for your word, Father God. It is a lamp unto our feet, and it is a light unto our path. And so we thank you tonight for the word, for those that are joining us and we expect father our lives to be better because of the word of truth that we'll hear tonight and we give you the praise for it in jesus name amen so again and we um um thank you for joining us tonight um i hope that each of you had a a great Independence Day um, holiday um, as we celebrated the freedom of our nation. Um, and I know that there are things that are um, currently going on in our nation uh, that uh, don't look so good. But um, as a believer, um, we're to stand in the gap for this land. We're to stand in the gap for our nation. Um, you know, as we've been talking about watching the words of our mouths, um, I think a good place to start is what we speak um, over our nation, what we um, speak over our leaders. Um, we are to be calling those things into, into play, into being that we want in this nation and that God has said about our nation. So we thank God tonight for America. We thank God for the freedoms that he, was, he has afforded us in this nation. Um, and a lot of people are, uh, from other nations are trying to get into this nation. Um, and so we want to just really thank God for where we are now, where he's taken us to. And um, daily in your prayer time, um, pray, decree, and declare the word of God over our nation. Amen. All right. Okay. So in our last few sessions, we were talking about, uh, words, um, words, our lives, and our future. Um, and we're going to, um, we're going to kind of stay in that vein, but we're going to shift a little bit. Um, I, um, I gave you some things concerning um, what the, the, the scripture says about our words, about watching our words, um, and I got a little off track. We were talking about words, your mouth, and your future. That's what we were talking about. Um, and so we're going to shift a little bit, um, and I think this is going to be good um, from the Spirit of God. And so tonight, we're going to talk about, even though we're in that same vein, we're going to talk about speaking from God's perspective, speaking from God's perspective. Now, when I began this, uh, this teaching, it really came about um, as the Spirit of God uh, arrested my attention when I had prayed. Uh, I had prayed um, over my daughter. Um, she was having a challenge in her body. I had prayed over her. Um, I prayed over um, her doctors, her nurses. I had prayed over the medication that they would be giving her because it was an emergency situation. Um, and um, just some things that transpired, I began to talk negatively uh, about the doctors, and um, I just didn't think they were doing things quick enough for me. <laughs> and so in that, the, the Holy Spirit arrested my attention. And the Spirit of God said to me, you have nullified that that you prayed by the words of your mouth. Because what I did was I released my faith for God to work in the situation. And then I turned right around out of the same mouth um, and began to just speak negatively um, and really nullified um, what I had prayed, what I had released my faith for. And so the Spirit of God arrested my attention in that area and it really came back to and these are things that I know that I've I practiced uh, but 
in this particular situation, I did not do what I know to do. And, the, the, and so that's really basically it. But he arrested my attention to the fact that your words are very, very important. Your words um, release your faith. You le release faith through your words. And so it's very important that we watch our words. And so really, that is the reason we got into the teachings that we had in prior Tuesday nights concerning our words. Now, some of you may say, well, um, that puts me in bondage to try to watch what I say. But the good news is, um, you can pray for God to set a guard over your mouth. And it's not, um, it's not meant to be something that is um, binding you, but rather it is something that will free you. It will free you. It will, it will change the course of your life. Uh, just, just that important to change the course of your life, that powerful to change the course of your life, to, um, um, just speak things out into your future where your future really is a brighter future. And so as we get into tonight, speaking from God's perspective, this is the thing that God is so gracious that he has um, made available to us everything that we need, everything that pertains to life and godliness. He has given us, we have the very spirit of God on the inside of us, um, that the spirit of truth who guides us into all truth. And so don't feel like um, I, I have to, with watching what I say, it's going to just put me in bondage. No, because it is, it is, it is a freeing thing. It's not a, a thing of bondage. And, and so I, I, I hope you'll keep that in mind as we uh, go into this tonight. Okay. So let's look at the definition of perspective. Now we're talking about speaking from God's perspective. God is not asking us to make up things to say. He has given us. He has given us promises. He has given us his word. He has given us the ability to speak as he speaks. All of that is ingrained in us, all right? And so he has not made this thing hard. He is not saying, okay, I just... I just need you to think of some things to say. No, he's given us exactly what to say. He's given us things that we can talk in line with. And matter of fact, his word became flesh and dwelt among us. We had the very word of God dwelling in us. So Jesus gave us the example of how to walk it out, how to speak in line with what God has already said and receive the same results as if God himself were speaking. Okay? It's just that powerful. I think I said in one of our uh, previous lessons that um, God, we are as a, uh, a human being, as a person, are the only species that God gave the ability to speak. The ability not only to speak, but to actually choose our words. And so um, there is a great responsibility that we have as believers because the way we bring, really bring the kingdom of God on the scene is speaking those things. I bring the, the kingdom of God in my household by speaking what God has said about my household, what God has said about my children, about uh, my spouse, what he has said. And so I take what he has already said and I put that in my mouth. And that's what I speak. And I don't speak contrary to that unless I want a different result. Okay? All right. Good. All right. So the word perspective. It is a particular attitude toward a way of regarding something. A particular attitude toward a way of regarding something. A point of view. Okay? As we look at some synonym, it, synonyms, it's outlook, view, viewpoint, standpoint, position, stand, stance, angle, Slant, attitude, frame of mind, frame of reference, approach, way of looking or thinking, vantage point, and interpretation. So when we talk about speaking from God's perspective, we want to 
align ourselves up, align our thinking up, align our attitude up, align our viewpoint up the way that God sees and the way that God does what he does. Because we talked about this, that we are made in the image of God. God has given unto us his very Holy Spirit that resides on the inside of us. So the very creator of the universe lives on the inside of us. And so again, we're not trying to... Um, make up something. We're not trying to uh, invent anything because what God has said, he has said. And so what I'm doing actually is lining my viewpoint up, lining my uh, perspective here again, lining the way um, my attitude toward, aligning uh, my point of view and I'm going to look and I'm going to actually function really the way that God functions. And so we're going to look at some of that tonight. Um, and uh, maybe get a better understanding of that. Amen? All right. Um, let's begin in 19 and 89. We'll look at several scriptures tonight. Um, Psalms 119 and 89. Um, let's begin there. Um, let me see. 119 and 89, and I'm going to read it in the Amplified, and then I'll read it in the um, Amplified, I'm going to read it in the King James, pardon me, and then we'll read it in the Amplified Classic. So for time's sake, um, most of the, the um, other translation I will be doing, will be, do, be doing it in the Amplified um, So Psalms 119 and 89, it says, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. So God's first perspective is that he is sure that what he says, what he has said, will come to pass. His, God's words are sure. There's no if and but about it. His word is sure. So we want to line up perspective. That is the way that I want to think. That when I speak God's word, that I when I speak what he tells me to say, when I speak in line with what he has said, then I know for a fact that that is a sure thing. God's word is sure. So again, in um, 119, 89, it says forever. Ever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. It's settled. So you know when something's settled, there's nothing else to do. It is a done deal. In the um, Amplified Classic, it says, that same verse in eight, uh, 89 says, Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven, stands firm as the heavens. Stand firm as the heavens. All right. So God's perspective, God's word is sure. Let's look at something else. Let's look at Psalms. Since we're in Psalms, let's go over to 111. Psalms 111. We're going to begin at verse 7. Psalms 111. And we're going to begin at verse 7. Again, I'm going to read it first from the King James Version, and then we'll go to um, the Amplified Classic um, Translation. Psalms 111 and verse 7. It says, The works of his hands are verity and judgment. All his commandments are sure. They stand, verse 8, they stand fast forever and ever and are done in truth and uprightness. He sent, verse 9, redemption unto his people. He hath commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverent is his name. Verse 10, the, of the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endureth forever. In the uh, Amplified, in verse 7, it says that the works of his hands, listen at this, the works of his hands are absolute truth and justice, faith right, and all his decrees and precepts are sure, listen at this, his decree, all, 
A-L-L. All principles and precepts are sure, fixed, and trustworthy. That's the best established ever and absolute truth and uprightness. He, he sent redemption to his people. He has commanded, listen at this, his covenant to be forever. Holy is his name, inspiring all reverence and godly fear. So God's word is your best in the earth. It's sure. It's absolute truth. It is right. Um, his decrees are sure. They're fixed. They're established and they're trustworthy. So I can be assured that when I speak, we have truthfulness. We actually absolute truth. We have uh, rightness. We have uprightness, and it is established forever. So God's word is sure. He has made he has laid the foundation. There will not be a change in what he said and what he's done. So if I speak in line with that, I can be sure. Amen. Good. All right. Let's go to let's look at this. Ezekiel 20 12. I'm sorry. Ezekiel 12 and verse 25. Ezekiel 12 and verse 25. In the King James, it says, For I am the Lord, and I will speak. And the word that I speak, listen at this, shall come to pass. It shall no more prolonged, for in your days over the time will I say will perform it, say it. Now this is Ezekiel, the children of Israel, but they had gotten off in rebellion. And so he has, has a word from God for them. In the Amplified classic, classic, it says, For I am the Lord, I will speak, and the word shall be performed, come to pass. It shall no more, it shall be or delayed for any rebellious house, I will perform it, says the Lord God. So we know that when we speak God's word, it is a sure thing. And I, I have to go back to this because um, we don't want to get um, in the mindset of, you know, I'm having to um, make to reinvent the wheel because it, it's, that's not what we're talking about. No, God has already said, I, I don't have to uh, be disturbed by what people think or what people say or how they perceive um, things when I'm speaking in line with God's word. I, you know, I, I'm just sure. I'm just sure that because God said it, his word is forever established. And if I'm in with him, then no matter what else comes against me or even comes against what I'm speaking in line with God's word, you know, circumstances sometimes, um, they look contrary to what we're saying. They look contrary to what God has said, that's mine. They look contrary because we have an enemy. And, and anything that he can do to try to get us off course, he'll do that. But I have to be sure. I have to be just like God, sitting uh, firm in what he has already said, sure in what his word has said. And so we want to just be in, in that vein as we look uh, and speak from God's perspective. And, and, and that's what we do, is that God are sure. And God is sure about his words. Amen? Okay. Let's look at one more. First Kings. I say one more. First Kings 8. First Kings 8, and let's look at verse 56. First Kings 8, 
in verse 56. <clears throat> okay. And let's look at it, I guess in the, um, we'll look at it in the King James, and then we'll come back and look at it in the Amplified. First Kings 8 and verse 56. First Kings 8 and verse 56. In the King James it says, Blessed be the Lord that blessed unto his people Israel, according to all that he promised. There hath not failed, listen at this, one word of his good promise, which was by the hand of Moses, his servant. In the Amplified, in the Amplified, it says, Blessed. Israel, according to all that he promised, not one has failed all the promise which he promised through Moses, his servants. Now, this is the rest of the people of Israel, but when we get over into the Hebrews, and Paul puts it like this that we, um, there is a rest for us, that we the rest of God and I can enter into that rest because of the fact that I know that God's word is sure now um, you know once we release the our faith and release things in the earth according to what God has said even things that God has has said that will happen in the time that we're living in in the last days you know um, things like they were not going to happen, but I don't know if you've looked around, but just some things that the scripture has said that happened, um, in this generation. Um, and so the scripture says that not one word has failed of all his good promise, which he promised through Moses, his servant. And I say to us that every promise that God has promised us, it will be fulfilled. And so God's words from his perspective are sure. Um, let's look at one more. Uh, Luke 21 and 33. Luke 21 and verse 33. And verse 33. And we get there. 21 and 33. And it says, and this is Jesus talking. Um, in verse 33, it says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Here we go again. God's words are sure. This is this is his perspective. His words are sure. So Jesus, even Jesus said this. He said that heaven and earth, it will pass away, but my words shall not pass away. That to me, that that if I can find it in scripture, if I can find a promise that God has promised me, if I can find something um, that God has said about me, now I can take that, put it in my mouth, let it get in my heart, begin to speak that, and no matter how long it takes, no matter what if I will continue to say what God has said, I can be sure that that, that it will come to pass, and it will come to pass in my life. Amen? And not just because I'm so goody-goody or whatever, but it's because God has already released that. And I'm simply lining myself up with God's perspective. This is the thing that we have to do. We have to become so... Um, rooted and grounded in truth, we have to become so persuaded, like Abraham was persuaded, that what God has promised he was able also to perform, we've got to get to that place, and we've got to look at it from the, the way that God looks at it, from his perspective, and that is that if he said it, it's a sure thing. It is a sure thing. All right. So, 
from God's perspective, number one, God's words are sure. So we've covered that for um, to for tonight. We're going to get into some more, um, and I, I, we're going to have time to get into it tonight. I spent a little bit um, much time on that one, but we will get to um, some other things. So I, I, I just um, thank you for joining us tonight. We thank you for um, just spending some time with us. I encourage you, just get into the Word of God and begin to, the way that we get his perspective is we aren't we aren't going outside of his world. We aren't going outside of the Bible. We aren't going outside to try to come up with something. No, I'm getting his perspective because I'm spending time with him in his word. And the Holy Spirit now is leading and guiding us into our truth. So thank you for joining us tonight. And we'll look forward. We'll pick up here on next week. And we'll get right back into speaking from God's perspective. We want to give you opportunity tonight to do that. Uh, you can simply uh, pray a prayer if you believe in your heart. And, and belief is a choice. It's a choice of something, uh, to believe something that you've heard. You make the choice whether you want to believe or not. And I'm saying Jesus came to this earth. He died for your sin. He took upon himself everything that you are, that you might become everything that he is. Every sin, present, past, future, every sin, every bad thing that you've done, God placed it upon Jesus. And all you need to do is just receive what he has already made available. And so pray this after me. Say, dear God, I make the choice to believe that Jesus came to this earth. He died for my sin. You raised him from the dead. And I receive him now as Lord of my life. Jesus, come into my heart. I receive you now and I call you Lord. Father, I ask you, fill me with the Spirit. Holy Spirit, thank you tonight that I am Lord. Amen. And so we say to you, if you um, <clears throat> repeated that prayer and you believe that in your heart, um, we say welcome to the family. Things out on our website. If you will go to our website, and that is www.nloc outreach. Dot com. If you go out, look at that, access the tab that says uh, what now or now what, and you can get some materials there that will help you begin your walk with God. If you um, don't have a, a local church that you're a member of, we invite you to come and be a part of this ministry. Come uh, fellowship with us, um, and we will receive you. You need to get in a local body of believers that will help you uh, and encourage you in your walk. Amen. Um, so for um, those of you that are <clears throat> so into the ministry, you have that opportunity. The Center, you already know what to do with your time and your offering. Those of you that are not a part of this fellowship uh, and you are not um, a member of a local church, then you are free to uh, sow into the ministry your offerings and we will receive them. This is good ground. We believe that. And so thank you tonight for joining us. Um, we um, hope that you receive something from the Word of God. We say that for some of us it was seeding, for others watering, but we expect increase on the word of God that we heard, that we receive, and that we practice. And we say as we leave that you can walk in a new quality of life. God bless.